eight lead, the probability starts falling. It's not 90% or you can argue with 90% anymore. So the problem is that the population is too small and you're taking a large enough, a too large a chunk. This is called a hypergeometric experiment, which we'll talk about maybe in 244 if we have time. We usually don't, but. So that, you, have, you have to watch that. You'll often hear me say arguably independent when you're drawing a small chunk from a large population. This is unfortunately a large percentage chunk from a small population, which means you've broken that independent part. Does that make sense? You guys buy that logic? Fairish, fairish, ish, 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 getting there. Okay, let's try another one. Let's try another one. It's from 2010. Special day shoes. Mm -hmm. shoes. So you're beginning to see my experiment that I did on my son in summer of 2010. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> this experiment I did on Max in summer of 2010. He's a big Croc fan, big Croc fan, like his old man. <laughs> backwards, backwards, backwards. Now, this was, this was tricky. I noticed it once, I'm like, oh, whatever. I mean, they're Crocs, they're like duck feet anyway. And I saw it the second time, I'm like, oh, that's kind of clever. And I saw it the third time, I'm like, huh. So then I started, I took pictures of him a few times, but then I started watching him. So I said, I'm going to watch him 10 times. I want to watch them 10 times and see what happens. So here's, what I, here's my data. Here's my data. First of all, I want to know, is this even a binomial experiment? Is this a binomial experiment, friends? If I watch my son 10 times and try to see, all I do is I observe how he puts his shoes on. Is it binomial? Yeah. Is it binomial? And we're going, to, we're going to assume that he's guessing because I have no idea what's going on in that beautiful head of his. But I'm going to assume he's guessing because he's got the damn shoes on the wrong feet. <laughs> He's got his damn shoes on the wrong feet. Like, like, what's wrong with you, boy? Put your shoes on. No, 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 no. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Let's just watch and see what happens. Hands off, kind of thing. And as soon as you start observing something, it can tend to process that you're observing it. So I tried to be as, 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 as much of a researcher as I possibly could. So if we're assuming he's guessing when he puts his shoes on, and I watch him exactly 10 times, is that binomial? Yeah. Hey, Jenny, go ahead. Well, hang on, hang on. Hang, well, if he doesn't care, that's essentially guessing, isn't it? No. Why wouldn't it be? If he doesn't care. I don't think it's guessing, it's just doing. It's, it's not like. Hmm. So you're saying whatever shoe's in front of me grabs that one and puts it on. It's just I need shoes to go up. To me, that's the same thing as guessing. Okay. To me, because that would, that would be like he walks out and grabs whatever shoe he sees first and puts it on whatever foot he wants to put it on. Well, whatever shoe he sees first is going to be randomly put in front. I mean, when kids take their shoes off, like I do, do you, do you think about laying them down right next to each other? My son kicks them across the garage. So they end up in this small pile of shoes by our door. Who knows which one's closer to the door or closer to him, right? So he's going to randomly assign the first shoe he gets to a randomly assigned foot. So I, my argument to you, Jenny, and this is, this is my opinion, is that guessing and that are the same thing. Okay. So we're gonna, we'll, we'll use the same wavelength here. Okay. Fair enough? Okay, so, so what do you think? Is it binomial? Yes. Yeah. If he's guessing, what's the chance he gets his shoes on the correct feet? It's 50-50, isn't it? It's got to be 50-50. It's, it's got to be a half. Perfect, perfect. Uh, do we satisfy the fixed number of trials bit? Yes. Yes, because I told myself I'm going to watch him 10 times because I want to use this in class. <laughs> so I told myself 10 times. Plus, it's a small enough sample size to use. Are they independent trials? And this is one of those arguable things. You think it's arguably independent, which means how he reacts on one trial, does that affect how he reacts on another trial? As long as he knows I'm not watching him, and he's not, he's not trying to perform for me, and as long as he's actually guessing, yeah. there's no reason to think it. It's almost like he has a coin in his head, and he's flipping it. And that coin is telling him which, shoe, which foot to put this shoe on. If it comes up heads, you're putting it on the left foot. If it comes up tails, on the right foot. Essentially, that's what's going on if he's guessing, or if he doesn't care. I think, I think they're the same thing. Fair enough? You guys ready? Model the distribution. Model the distribution. Let's model it together. So it is binomial. I think it is. I think it's arguably binomial. Ten trials, yes. Yes. Ten trials, independent, probability of 0.5. Okay. I'm going to put this up. I believe. I believe this is arguably a binomial distribution. I'm going to switch this over. I believe this is arguably zero. binomial. Would the smallest be zero or one? Well, if we're defined, that's why I want to put some stuff on the board here, because we've done a lot of PowerPoint today, which if is great. If he, he takes the shoes out of the file, it could be both left. Let's, both define, let's define Max's random variable. Okay. What, what am I interested in? How many times he gets his shoe on the right How many times he gets his shoe on the correct feet? Mm -hmm. So that's what I want to define my random variable. My random variable is going to be defined to be the number of times 
Max gets his shoes on the correct feet. So now the question is, is what's the minimum number of times? Zero. He might never get up on the correct feet. He's guessing, right? There might, it might be zero. He may flip tails in his head every time. He's got the wrong shoe on his foot each time. So we're going to go back to program, just fill. Smallest x is zero. Largest x? Ten. It's got to be ten. Yeah. He might get them all on the correct feet every single time too, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. It's get, it, 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 we're very quick, actually. Very, very quick. Got it done. Fill with binomial, yes. Probability success? 0.5. Point 0.5. Five. Five. Okay, there we go. Done. This is flipping a coin. This is the same as flipping a coin 10 times. Exactly the same thing. This is your equal 50 feet jader vector coin. But this is your perfect coin. This is no longer chickens. This is if all the baby birds got thrown into one big pot. We didn't sex them. They're all together now. They're all together now. Okay, boys and girls all mixed together. All right, let's go take a look at it. Ed, do you want to just graph it? Do you guys like the graph? The, yeah. the graph? Yeah, I, think, I think it's kind of nice. This draw, here she is. What does that look like? Bell. Bell curve. As I look at the clock, I think that YouTube video on for Monday is going to be the tie-in between the binomial and the normal distribution. We'll get to that on Monday, though. Beautiful. So, symmetrical. it's perfectly, thank you for that word. It's perfectly symmetrical. Why? Because, because the probability is 50-50. As soon as you start deviating from 50-50, it starts becoming skewed. Mm -hmm. But when it's 50-50, it's perfectly symmetrical. So, on average, friends, on average, how many times should he get his shoes on the correct feet? Five. He should get his shoes on the correct feet five times on average. Now, there is a little formula that you guys may or may not realize you're using. Can you, you know what the formula is when I ask you for the average of a binomial? I, you, did you figure it out last time? You may have figured it out last time. One of the classes, I can't remember if it was your class or their class. It's number of trials Time. times probability. So it's 10 times 0.5 or 5. Now, of course, you don't have to do this. You don't have to, you could run one bar stats to figure this out. You don't have to memorize formulas. I don't expect you to memorize formulas. I don't want you to. So run one bar stats, if you would, friends, because there's something else I want to chit chat about because we have this beautiful, perfect symmetry that looks kind of like a bell curve. One bar stats, L1, L2. One bar stats, L1, L2. I get an average. They're calling it X bar. Eh, I'm not a huge fan of that, calling it X bar. It's actually, we should actually call it. The mu. Yep, we should actually call it mu. The average number of times he should get his shoes on the correct feet is five times. But here's what I'd like to do now. I'd like to also look at that standard deviation of about 1.58. If you want to, I'm going to put it in parentheses. If you want to. Would you feel okay using that standard deviation for some kind of computation now? Remember, I always give, I always give this, I put these cautions out here to you guys to think about this, because you're taking these statistics out of this class eventually and going somewhere else with them. When do you like using averages? The actual, the average itself versus the median or the mode. When do you like using the average? When the data is symmetric and bell-shaped. We like that. That's why I love what Mimi said earlier when I asked about the, uh, the most likely outcome for the chickens or for the colorblindness. I forget what it was. And you said, well, the most, it was, it was the die rolls. The most happens at one. Boom, mode. You can't go wrong with a mode. You can never go wrong with a mode. But an average is more commonly used in the world. So I wouldn't feel too bad using that standard deviation. I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel too bad about using that standard deviation, the plus or minus 1 point to 1 point 6, because, because it's a symmetric distribution. There's no, there's no skew to talk about. But what I do want to do is I want to analyze. I want to analyze my son a little bit here. I have a question for you. Let's go forward here. Oh, you can't see that yet. I'm sorry. Here's, here's a research question I have for you. So I watched him 10 times. And as far as I can tell, he didn't know I was watching him. I plan on sharing this with him later in life. You know, that's when we sit down and have a beer together. He told me I traumatized him by doing this to him. Excuse me. My Damn question. it. This is why. When he did it, was he happy? He's a pretty happy kid. 
I don't think he was any I differently mean, happy when he did it or not did it. Because I didn't react. Because if he did, it means that he was thinking, not guessing. And when he he put them on the right. Well, be thing, careful saying. Was, be careful saying it means he was thinking. I mean, not uh, guessing. I would say it might might imply right, that might be yeah. some kind of physiological response. Yeah, that's insane. All I know is I didn't react any differently when he got him on the okay. correct feet than when he did. I I was completely neutral. And usually seconds after, we're going to be jumping into the pond and catching frogs anyway. So it's <laughs> I didn't know Jen. I only noticed the Crocs, because that's all we wore in that summer. He never wore anything else except Crocs all the time. Where was barefoot? So they could be used, he just doesn't know the difference. He goes with other oh. shoes too, but it's only Crocs. Goes back to Jen, what Jenny was saying up here. Yes, yes, yes. So all we wore that summer was Crocs. Mm -hmm. All of his mini-me. Um, does he know that, like, which shoe goes on which foot? At all? I have no or idea. Well, now he does. Now he puts them on the, on the correct feet. What I think, though, he might think it's correct. So that's that's part of the question. That's part of the question. Is he guessing? If we can say he's most likely not guessing, then that means it probably implies he thinks what he's doing is correct. So what do you guys think? Is he guessing? Is he guessing based on this data right here? Let's he's just thanks, buddy. Thank you. The kid's wrong. Quantify it for me, friends. Quantify. How how certain are you that he's not guessing? So How certain are you that he's not guessing? Like, you have the tool in your TI. Yeah. It's already in your TI. When you put it on the right feet, did he react? I don't think so. That's what I think that's what Elena was saying. Did he did he oh. look happier? I I just saw what he did, made a note of it in my mind, and we went out and caught frogs and caught fish and played in the dirt. Yeah, that's why I think he really doesn't care. Like it's just putting shoes on. So let's quantify it. Let's quantify it. You have the tool needed in your TI. <laughs> Go back and look at your distribution. Let's ask ourselves this. Let's assume he's guessing. Let's assume he's guessing for a moment. Mimi wants to disprove that assumption. Love it, by the way. This is what 244 does every day. We start with an assumption and try to see if we can disprove it. Okay? You think that drug works? I don't think it does. Prove it to me that it does. In other words, you disprove that it doesn't work, if that makes sense. It's kind of like Sherlock Holmesy kind of stuff. So what's the chance, assuming he's guessing, assuming that he's guessing, What's the chance that he would only get his shoes on the correct feet one time? Just about 1%, right? Just about 1% of the time. That's pretty rare, isn't it? 1% of the time is well under that unusual 5% cutoff that we, we use. Which means, if he was truly guessing, if he were truly guessing when he put his shoes on, he shouldn't have only gotten him on his correct feet one time. On average, how many times did he got him on his feet? Five. On average, he should have gotten him on five. And even four and six are pretty likely, aren't they? Yeah. Even four and six. Well, hell, even three is pretty likely. That's one in eight times, roughly. It's when you start getting down to two and one and zero. And conversely, if I saw him getting the shoes on the correct feet more than, say, seven times, if I saw him getting his shoes on the correct feet eight and nine and ten, think about this. Every time you guys put your shoes on your feet, you get them on the correct feet. Most of the time, I'm assuming, unless you're wickedly hungover or something. <laughs> so you're like, if I put my shoes on a hundred times, you get them on the correct feet 99 times. Well, that means you're over here. That means you're probably not guessing. You're probably putting them on the correct feet because you think they're going on the correct feet. Same logic, I think, proves Mimi's hypothesis. He's probably not guessing because if you were guessing, there's almost no chance he should have gotten his shoes only on the correct feet one time. He should have gotten them on the correct feet yeah. more than one time. Which means we don't think he's guessing, we think he thinks that's how they should actually look. Why? No idea. I have no idea. That's, that's a much more look. That's why I jumped on Elena when she said, if he reacts, then it means careful. We're trying to look inside the mind of a two-year-old and process what he's, what he's thinking. That's, what, that's, that's the thing. Those psychologists have to do this all the time. All I say is, I agree with Mimi, I don't think he's guessing. That's the best I can do. I don't think he's guessing. That, that's, the, that's all we can say. We can't prove why. I mean, maybe it's because we have ducks in our pond every summer, and he sees their feet, and he's trying to make his feet and his yellow crocs look like, yeah, I mean, maybe, what if he had green crocs or dark blue? Would it do the same thing? I don't know. He's not two anymore. I can't test it anymore. You guys, check with your two-year-olds. Test with your two-year-olds. Give them, give them green crocs one day and blue crocs the other. See if they put their shoes on their own feet differently. My youngest one, she knew exactly which song goes to the left and to the right. Socks are left and right specific? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't either. 
you I swear. I like, <laughs> what? He felt like this. So dirty that this. Well, toe socks, is, yes, I agree. No. <laughs> just, Stupid yeah. freaking. <laughs> those things freak me out. Those that's things freak, those things freak me out. Those toe socks, <laughs> they, they freak me out, man. It doesn't matter. There's no Four one hands. goes to the right, not to the left. Well, toe socks, I get that. <laughs> no, just regular socks. He's feeling the hell out of me. He's the hell out of me. Cool, makes sense? That is the binomial distribution. So, what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking, I want you guys to bring questions on this for next time. I won't see you for a week. I'll see you in a week. So you'll have your take-home exam to knock out for next time too. And also bring questions on the binomial distribution. I will prepare the video this afternoon on the link up between the binomial and the normal. It's all just a pretty much a straight up lecture anyway that I would have done on Monday as well. So we'll start with that. I'll, I'll, I'm also gonna put some TI stuff. I'll run the TI a couple times, I think, on the video so you have another resource to use the program. Because chances are you're like, I got this right now. And you might, between now and then, forget how we ran the program. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'll get those back to you on Wednesday, too, those exams. I'll try. I can't promise this. I will try to get a progress report out tomorrow before I leave for this trip. To, so that, I, I can't do the rainy day, pro, uh, cu, uh, excuse me, the progress reports from my, my iPhone. I've tried and I screws it up. So I'm going to try to get your exams graded and in the books before I leave tomorrow and then be able to progress report to you guys. Uh, I usually do them on Fridays, so I'll be able to do it on Friday. So we'll get that nailed out. And then we'll get everything squared away on uh, next week. Cool? Rock on, have a good weekend. We'll catch you guys on Wednesday. What's up, Elaine? So um, I just want to say that um, the first question 